morning everyone okay so let's start and uh, let's bring your feet so they're right under your hip bones all right and then relax the lower back relax your shoulders and then relax put your weight into one side down the center of the leg and then melt the other side from the hip down and then put it into rotation so drop your hip drop your knee ankle and foot like you're melting your quad Melt your calf, melt the top of the foot, and then put it into rotation. Good. Then go the other direction. And then put that foot down and then feel the weight transfer to the other side, then melt the other side. Melt the quad, the calf, and the foot. Engage your core both sides, even though they might feel a little bit different from each other because they're doing something slightly different. Rotate the other way. So your knee on your post leg, it's not locked out. You're not standing on your knee. You feel all the way down into your foot. Good, now put your feet together. Bend the knees and then drop your lower back. Put the hands on the knees without any weight and then begin to circle the knees. Okay, so no weight on the hands. Try not to um, roll the shoulders forward. No rolling the shoulders forward. Just keep dropping the lower back. Rotate in the other direction so that you feel the soles of the feet. And then stand up straight through the crown of the head. And from here, put your hands on your belly. You can widen your stance just a little bit. And then just gently draw a circle with your hip and your waist, just gentle rotation, opening up the hip joints. Feel the shoulders relaxed as you do this. Shoulders relax, the hips can relax. And again, really feel all the way down into your feet. Stay in the centers of your feet, at least keep tracking the centers of your feet so you're not grinding on your knees. Okay, you're feeling all of your toes, track all 10 of your toes. Okay, and then stay in that center target area in the center of the foot. Good, all right, separate the hands and roll the shoulders back. Drop them into gravity and feel the neck elongate. Feel the neck drop down as the shoulders drop away from the shoulders. Shoulders drop away from the ears. Shoulders don't drop away from the shoulders. You just feel the lower part of the neck drop down, increasing the space in between the vertebrae of the neck. Good, release your jaw, release the temples. And in reverse direction. Good. Stay in your core a little bit. All right, try not to lock out the knees. You're still feeling your A-frame. So you feel the centers of your feet. You feel the top of the head in your A-frame. Your core is still engaged so you can decompress the joints in your body. Good, from here, bend the knees, big circle up, then come out to the sides and then bend the knees. Good, big circle up. Crown up, arms down as the arms come down the sides, then bend the knees after you get to the shoulders. So you stay in the high position until you pass the shoulders and then slowly bend your knees, then slowly raise up the center line. And big breaths into your belly. Keep your chin slightly tucked. The chin is slightly tucked so you feel the crown of the head, the highest point of the head lifting up as you're doing this. And you feel um, all of the tendons of the arms and the hands just easing out, stretching out like your fingers are really, really long. And that there's not more tension in one finger than another. Good. And then that's reverse direction. Turn the palms up at the chest level. Bend the knees, but keep the spine straight. And raise up through the crown of the head. Turn the palms towards you, crown up, arms down. Good, then send your feet, send, your, send the roots down your feet to raise up, 
then crown up, arms down. Down the feet, spend the roots down as you raise the arms and crown up, arms down. Good, bring your belly in a little bit, drop your back, lengthen your back to raise the arms and always feeling down into the feet. So connecting your A-frame from head to foot, two points at the sole of the feet and the highest point on your head. And then from here, raise the arms to the chest level, drop them into gravity. Good, with this bouncing, now you can really kind of test your A-frame. Like, are you really on the center of your feet? And again, you wanna feel all the toes, you wanna to feel around the, uh, the entire foot, the instep, the side of the foot, all the way to the heel. But you wanna keep that internal archway uh, lifted, that dome-like shape you want to feel like has a strong architectural shape. Good, step one foot in front of the other, like you're about to, you're just going for a stroll. Keep your knee pointed forward, there's the, the weight is not shifting side to side. Okay, both feet are on the ground, front toe is pointed ahead, and then focus your attention on your dantian and your belly and then switch your feet. Just very calmly switch your feet and let the upper body stay very calm and relaxed, and then switch your feet again. So you want your arms just dropping into gravity. Gravity dropping is allowing for the rotation and then you feel that being translated into your belly. So your belly, you feel a little bit of a waist turn and your hips are rotating, not rotating so much. Your hip bones and your knees pointed straight ahead. Your nose is pointed straight ahead. Switch your feet again. And take some deep breaths into your belly and then switch. Good. Keep your core engaged. Chin is slightly tucked and switch, and switch, and switch. Good, and then just bring a random stepping to your own switching of your feet so that you surprise yourself. Surprise yourself, don't be in a regular rhythm. And then feel like those tendons in the arms and the hands, they just get longer and longer, like you've got really, really long fingers and arms or you've got these yo-yos that are zinging out in front of you. Keep switching your feet at a random pace, random rhythm, right? And you've got 10 yo-yos sending out from each fingertip, right? And then coming back into your palm and into your arm. Okay, so keep in your center. Good, all right, from here. Put your toes in a line, look over the right shoulder, rotate your head. Good. Come across the top. And then from here, really feel like you're using the entire body to rotate your head. So um, feel like you can activate the opposite side of your body, the opposite side of which your head is turning. So your neck, your shoulder, your belly, and you feel all the way into your leg and foot, the center of the leg and the foot, and you're breathing into your belly. So you're not separating your head from the rest of the body, as we seem to, we are want to do sometimes, Return, uh, reverse your direction. And it might feel different on this side, Relax your shoulders, see what you can do to drop the tension, lengthen the tissue in your chest, the pectorals, right underneath your collarbone, your neck, your shoulder, your belly, your hip, all the way down into your foot. Good, and then from here, look in the center and then Step out into a wider stance, good. And then bend at the waist as you drop your arms and keep the shoulders in neutral. Keep the shoulders in neutral and lengthen the lower back. 
Take some deep breaths into your belly. Deep breaths into the belly. And feel the lengthening of the hamstrings, the backs of the legs, the glutes. Feel the lengthening of the back. Let the neck traction down with gravity and keep the shoulders in neutral. There's no rolling forward. And then as you roll up the spine, engage your pelvic floor first and then roll up from the base all the way up to the top, to the crown of the head. When you're up, you can walk your feet in. Good, all right. All right, from here, get into a horse stance, all right? Like you're playing the piano and somebody kicked the stool out from behind you. Okay, so you're here, you're playing the piano, very soft on the keys, shift your weight to one leg, stay in the center of the leg, and then as you come into an empty stance, you can either put your toe down or you can just stand on one foot and feel this core engagement here. So you feel this straight line going up through the top of the head, then bend a little bit in your post leg, and then come back out onto the piano keys. Okay, very gentle with the upper body. You really want to feel your A-frame consolidate into the center, into your Dantian, and also into the center vertical axis of your body. So you feel that kind of like fountain-like quality uplifting your spine. Okay, so your shape is like the Eiffel Tower. So it's a little bit wider at the base and then it curves and it shoots up to the top. Okay, but you're not lifting up off the ground. You want to have up and down balance. So you're going down with the root and then up at the crown of the head simultaneously, thinking up and down simultaneously like a big rubber band inside of your body, okay, inside of your body. And then breathing into your belly, don't forget to breathe. Expanding the lungs, letting the diaphragm ascend and descend, making room for your lungs to increase their capacity. And from here, come back out into your, sort of like you're playing the piano again. Good, and then from here, bring the hands a little bit closer together when you, when you go up and down, so you just go up and down a little bit <clears throat> and see if you can feel the back and the underside of your hip spherical shape here, right? The hip is a ball and socket joint. Feel the back and the underside, like almost like you're blowing up a balloon in the hips, but put more attention on the back. So as you're just bouncing up and down, just really gently, you're not sitting back, and you're also not arching. So you're not, uh, you don't want to tense up the back as you're doing this. You actually want to feel like there's, there's a flow, there's a downward flow that allows you to feel all the way into the soles of the feet as you do this, because you're expanding this area uh, that you can't see, but you can feel into. So the hip balloons you're feeling in three dimensions as you bounce up and down. Bouncing in slow motion, Tai Chi bouncing. <laughs> okay. So it should be very, very gentle, very gentle. Like uh, the feeling is like you're, like you're bouncing on like one of those giant rubber plastic uh, exercise balls, that kind of feeling. Okay, good. Then when you do this, we're going to be uh, like as if we're polishing a table in front of us. Okay, let me get a little bit closer here. So here, start in the center, your hands are a little bit closer together, right? And then as you sink, expand those hip balloons and without leaning, don't lean. Instead, just do the same thing you were doing with your legs, expanding the balloons and then go out and then come back in. Okay, and then just stay rough, like you're not, try not to go out there somewhere. You're staying close in, so I'm not reaching. I'm not reaching, I'm not going for distance. I wanna feel back and front balance, okay? Back and front balance, so like I'm inside the balloon and I feel the balloon expanding, not just in front of me, but in back of me too, 
not just the one side, but the other side as well, upwards and downwards. So all six directions, front, back, side to side, up and down, like I'm polishing a tabletop with my palms as I'm going on the horizontal plane. And I'm feeling that cushy, shock absorbing quality in my hip joint. Okay, now go the other way. And I'm not shifting my weight. So you can probably notice how seductive it is to want to just do a little bit of drunken style Tai Chi. All right, but we're not doing that too early for that. So we're just going up and down with the legs, going up and down with the legs and then keeping the shoulders. See how my shoulders aren't raising? So I'm not pulling in and I'm not pushing out either. So I just wanna have a very spacious feeling in my hips and in my shoulders. Okay, I wanna keep and preserve the space and I'm not overreaching. I wanna stay within my body design and not push out beyond its limits. I wanna recognize what the limits are so I can fully expand into that space. Okay, and so then, when you're doing this in reverse direction again, just imagine like you've got a mirror of yourself behind you. Just really take that in. Imagine that there's a mirror of yourself behind you doing the exact same thing. And really feel like you're inhabiting that mirror image of yourself. And see how that balances your front and back relationship. Does it awaken? your relationship in reverse direction? Does it help to balance and awaken your relationship to the back of your body so that you don't feel you're not actually limited by what you can see in front of you? You have this whole other part of you that you can activate and integrate into your consciousness and feel a fullness there. You can embody that. Good, now let's go up and down again. And then also feel this person, yourself reflected behind you as you're moving up and down. So we're moving up and down, so you're thinking down to go up and up to go down. Send the roots down in, a, in order to float the upward motion. And then crown is lifting as you let the arms come down. And then feel like there is a mirror of yourself behind you, your Siamese twin that you didn't know you had. Okay, and then really feel, feel the hip in its three dimensions, fill the balloons, then feel the shock absorbing quality in the feet. Feel the shock absorbing quality in the feet as you do this. Good, and then from here, let's go to the horizontal plane. So keep that same thing going in your feet. So we're gonna mix it up a little bit so you can feel a fluidity in your changing movements. Good, go the other way. Reverse direction on your circle. And remember, you're not shifting weight. You're not shifting weight. Don't be seduced by shifting weight. So your hips are not moving side to side, just up and down. Your legs are just moving up and down. Good, go the other direction. Other direction and try not to push your shoulders out, just inflate the balloons. Then let's go up and down. Good, as you feel the arms go down, feel the uprightness of your spine. Get very like organized here in the frontal plane. You feel very organized melt out any sort of tension in your jaw and in your face, the sides of the heads, feel them like stretched down. Feel them stretched down like a rubber band on a warm day. Good. Then from here, we're gonna bend our knees a little bit further. So we're gonna go down and then cross the hands and then raise up. As you do this, again, feel yourself behind you, feel behind you a mirror image. 
And then you can go down as far as you want, as long as you can keep the uprightness of the spine. So you can go, you don't have to go low, you can just go here, or you can go as low as you can, you can get big gorilla arms if you want. Okay, it doesn't really matter, just keep this, the joint spaces open and flowing. And then you can alternate which arm is crossing in the front, doesn't really matter. And, and then try not to push out with the shoulders. Feel the space in there, engage your core, keep your core engaged. Engage your core first, then feel the loft through the spine. Keep your core engaged as you let the arms come down. Good, go the other way. Good, and really try not to bend forward or backwards so the spine is straight here. Okay, so don't collapse in this way. Good. Good. Now from here, gather the chi on the lower Dantian level and then come up to the chest level and then rotate the arms out and then let them just drop down by engaging your core. So bring your belly in and then let this go down. These are relaxed. You're not pushing. All right. And then rotate like around a dowel then fold in like a, like you're engaging your core, like you're bringing the front of your belly and the lower back closer together, like you're giving yourself a hug from the inside. Good. So this is like your internal panini press, right? So you feel that kind of internal hug. Okay, so again, I'm not going forward. I'm not leaning forward. So keep your core connection. All of this movement is through the core. So you're decreasing any sort of tension in the shoulders. And, and then let them drop down here. And then inhale and come up the sides. Less than 180 degrees. Okay, less than 180 degrees. So not here slightly in the front. Let them fully extend, like drop your hands down. All right. Drop your hands down and then feel like you're pulling yourself into your armpit and then into your, like have it wrap around your belly, your ribs, and then into your dantian, your lower abdomen. And into your arm, like the underside of your arms, the armpit, the ribs, and into your belly. Good, and then expand out like a balloon. You're inside the balloon, you're in the center of the balloon. So you feel that left and right balancing. You feel slight up and down and you feel front and back. So your person, your mirror self is doing the same thing behind you and you're balancing left, right, front, back, Feel the space in the hip joints. Feel that shock absorbing quality in the feet and in the knees. Okay, very gentle on the joints. Should feel very spacious and open. Good, and then let the arms drop down. And then raise up here, bring your core in and let this float up like an elevator. Then drop your hip open as you rotate this up, good, palms face the sky, drop your lower back as you raise the arms. See what you can do to lengthen and feel the length and elasticity return to the back of the abdomen and then drop and release any tension in the lower back. As you breathe into your belly, this is your happy Buddha, this is your happy Buddha posture. All right, and then from there, rotate, and then bend the knees a little bit, and then come down on the vertical. Your arms are vertical, so your, your elbows aren't out. Just let it drop straight down with gravity. Then rotate palms up, and then use your legs a little bit by engaging your core. Good. So this is like you're inside the balloon, and the balloon is breathing, so it gets a little bit more condensed. 
towards the center in your belly and then it gets bigger in all directions so not just up up down front back side to side think three dimensionally up down front back side to side up down front back side to side right you are in the balloon you are the balloon you're the inside of the balloon and you're the outside of the balloon okay think of yourself as a three-dimensional being awaken those areas that feel a little bit blank just bring some awareness into there build some neuromuscular connection sensation through those areas that feel a little bit underdeveloped the back of you the back of the hip the side of the hip underneath the hip good and then let the arms come fully down and then raise like you're breathing through your legs big bubble you still got your big bubble you didn't flatten out into a paper plate you still got a big three-dimensional bubble three-dimensional bubble front back side to side up and down and breathing into your belly feeling the lungs expand feel the lungs expand filling in three dimensions inside of your body like big balloons keeping the chin slightly tucked good all right and then from here step your feet together Bring the palms together, one on top of the other, and take three breaths deeply, sealing and settling in the chi at the lower abdomen, the lower dantian. Now in keeping all of your principles, keep the shoulders down, keep your core slightly engaged, then seal in the chi, so you're still doing your qigong here. Okay, so you haven't gone to sleep, Go in both directions, three times both ways. Good. Keep your shoulders down as you bring your hands together. Engage your core and rub your hands together, but don't use your neck. Your neck is a neutral. No tension in the jaw. Good. And then from there, when you separate the hands, then bathe the face and the head, all the senses in the upper dantian. You're bathing them in this chi. You're still engaging your core to originate your movement, initiate your movement from the core. And then let it diffuse all the chi, diffusing from head to foot from to every cell in the body. Good, all right. Thanks for showing up. I'll be around here for a few questions. I really appreciate the gentleness of the arm and shoulder movements without the weight changes, which it's felt quite lovely. Um, um, I don't. I have not seen. I'm sorry to say your Tai Chi form. I guess I should watch it. I will watch it online. And I, but um, in Professor Chen Man Ching's form, we don't do what we call um, breaking the wrist. You know. And some forms do do that. Some forms have that, and I understand that. So when you said the happy Buddha pose, I thought, oh, that sounds lovely. I, I hadn't thought of that. I remember seeing the Buddhas, you know, with their arms up like that, right? You know, it's that very familiar image. Yeah. Yeah. And it felt good to do it, and it feels good to do it. But as I noticed it, I'm sort of like breaking my wrist, mm -hmm. and, you know, and I'm wondering in your form, what, what do you do with that? Yeah, so I don't know if you all have been in a... Chinese restaurant, probably not recently. <laughs> you often find the happy Buddha holding the giant golden ingot up here. So um, what Carol's referring to is like separating um, um, at the joints of the body. So there's no breaking of the, uh, of the wrist as in making a hard angle where the hand is doing different, something different than the arm. The arm is doing something different than the body, the base of the body. So those principles stay. This is very much about utilizing your core and really thinking about this shape as like a bow. So this is not just an arm with its hands flopped over. 
Okay, so to create this shape happens way before. It's already here. This bow-like shape here is similar to the bow-like shape up here. Okay, so here you're engaging, you're raising your pelvic floor to raise this up. Remember like uh, we talked about last time, this is like getting under a sack of groceries and you don't want your single paper grocery bag to split from the bottom. So you're carrying, you're bringing this, like you're giving yourself a hug. You want it close to your body, right? That's already starting way down here. And then you let it travel up all the way up here. And then at this point, this is like a bow-like shape. It's not just an arm with a hinge on it. This whole shape is like a bow, like a bow and arrow bow. So in, in architecture, arcs, arcs are very strong architectural shapes, right? So that means like with a bow, with a bow, so I'll do it this way. That means any point that is on the surface of the ball, right? So this is basically a bow is like this shape that goes around a ball, right? So around at any point of this ball, any contact, any contact is at the highest point of the ball. So here is just like my arm has an angle in it. Whereas here, my arm is like a globe, right? So if my arm is like a globe and in fact, my whole body is like this bubble, right? Inside, I feel the interior, the back of my abdomen. I feel like the back of my body beyond the borders of my skin. If all of this is like a bow, that means that every point along there is just like I'm, I'm trying to squeeze or compress a balloon, right? I can't really do that. All it does is make me feel like I'm hugging my own self in the center. I'm just giving myself a little bit of a hug in the center when I do that, right? So if I don't put any ang angles in the balloon, then there's no puncture. Okay, so this, the principles, the same principles apply as you learned in your, in your Tai Chi class. This, it's not just breaking at the wrist. It, this wrist shape happens way down here. So this shouldn't feel hard up here. You're not trying to pull your arms back. You're not pulling your fingers back. You're going around an arc. Okay, like you're stretching a fabric around a ball. You're stretching like a elastic fabric around the ball. That's the kind of feeling you want here. Okay, so it's, it's soft. It preserves the space in the shoulders. So that's one of the core principles in, in Tai Chi. So it's great that you bring it up. Anybody else have a question? Anyone else have a practice question? Okay, so this week, really just think about yourself and your three-dimensional shape. Think beyond the borders of your skin, right? Expand your, what we would call your qi chang, your, your kind of like your qi bubble, your qi field. Imagine that all around you three-dimensionally and that it can breathe, it has life, okay? It has its own integrity. And it's just not, it's not just imagining with your mind, feel it in your body, okay? This is like engagement of like the, the real dynamic Dantian of you, okay? So imagine yourself behind, work with the six directions, up, down, front, back, side to side, and just feel that expansive quality of you as the balloon, you as a breathing, alive balloon. Have a great rest of the day, everybody.